rentrer et comme on va prendre le sac de l'éducation. Now, if you don't even have this one, then what would happen? What would happen is the piece of class tried, but their RNAs are no longer processed into MRNAs, and by results from running of the system, these RNAs are expected to be stuck at the locus. Now, once the RNAs are stuck at the locus, they could actually do no more things. They could form what people call triplex formation. But this is not what we at the moment think is going on. What we think is going on is when these repeats are stuck at the locus, they include other RNA processing activities which are playing an important role in heterochromatic formation. But there is also a possibility that some components of RNA, in particular there is a protein called RIC1, which is part of the metal complex, might actually bind to these aberrant RNAs to directly target heterochromatic now, these sort of processes are expected to be further facilitated by other things happening when transcripts get stuck. One of the things we know is if you have a transcript stuck at a locus, it could interfere with further rounds of bond to transcription. If that happens, then that might also have some contribution to formation of heterochromatin. But one prediction of that model is that the effects in power to processivity should have effects on RNAi independent heterochromatin assembly. Now, indeed, we knew from work done by Ki Zhang and Francisca in the lab that MLO3 mutant cells are actually sensitive to a drug called 6 a which affects RNA bond to processing. Now, we ask the question, what would happen if you mutate other factors which are required for bond to processing? Would they have any effect on heterochromatin formation in absence of RNA machine? One such factor is a factor called PF2S. If PAL2 gets stuck on chromatin or difficult to pass agents, it backtracks. The RNA is cleaved by two stimulated activities and the pearl to makes another push to pass by two sequence. We asked, is TF2S required for formation of heterochromatin? The answer to that is yes. Just like MLO3, deletion of TFS1 combined with argonaut actually was able to suppress silencing defects of the argonaut mutant and that correlates with marked increase in histone H3 lysine 9 methylation levels from threefold enrichment in argonaut to 26 fold enrichment in the double mutant, as well as Y6 levels are also going up. Now, how could Paul II be more important for this? Now, I'll just briefly, I'd like to mention that Paul II actually gets modified at its longest by a number of different genetic activities. And one of those is a protein called LSK1 in Pabi. This LSK1 is known to phosphorylate serine 2 of PAL2 on elongating PAL2 activity. And that serves as a sort of recruiting platform for many chromatin modifying as well as RNA processing activity. And we know that LSK1 actually is required for TFS1. For TFS1 mediated expression of RNAi mutants, although we don't really understand the whole mechanism. So in any case, what I'd like to leave you in from this part of the talk, that you can assemble heterochromate without RNAi, simply with the help of these transcripts, if you uh, find ways to tether these transcripts or, or, or retain them at the locus by doing some genetic and there are probably similar sort of things happening at a number of places in the genome. For example, if you have a situation where there is a 3 prime end processing problem, uh, the people are arguing that there are actually check modes which would retain those transcripts held at the locus till something happens, either the transcripts are processed properly or those transcripts are uh, removed by RNA negative uh, activities. Now, obviously, 
similar kind of things could happen in other places as well. As I mentioned earlier, in print, the uh, epigenetic phenomenon are nucleotides. Uh, and, and the question is, do similar mechanisms impact in print or vaccine activation or other processes with powerful transcription and non-coding RNAs can be implicated in this process? Now, in the final few minutes of my talk, uh, I'd just like to take you briefly through a few pieces of data that, that, that has led us to uh, conclude that RNAi and heterocomitin factors can impact other parts of the genome away from those classic heterocomitin regions. Now, this work started with mapping of this methyl phosphate complex. What we found is that in addition to high levels of this complex associated with centromeres or telomeres, we found low levels of these complex subunits localized in euchromatic regions of the gene. Now that obviously led us to ask questions, is there a functional signal to this? And, and for many months we have been trying to explore that further but could not find really much happening. In the meantime, there was a work published from Crawford Lab which showed that heterocomitin might be actually recruiting cohesion and convergence, and that might have a role in transcription combination. But the key thing is, if you delete any of these factors, there isn't really any widespread change in sense or anti-sense transcripts across primary genome. So that led Martin Zofall in the lab to ask the question, are there any other redundant factors which are playing a role similar to what heterocomitin does? And, and, and we are sort of fooled in, in seeing and in, in not detecting any changes in transcripts and other things uh, when we delete these single factors. So for that matter, he actually did a genetic screen where he combined this methyl transcripts deletion with deletions of many different genes in the genome, and he found when he combines CLAR4 deletion with the deletion of a variant histone H2AZ, the double mutants were extremely simple. Now, this is important, and, and I should point out that H2AZ is a variant histone, which is loaded onto chromatin with the help of enzyme called SWOR1, identified in Carl Hughes lab, and loss of H2AZ actually affects various chromosomal processes, but its exact function remains sort of unknown. Now, if you do transcriptome analysis in single or in these double mutants, you find something very interesting. Now, single mutants really don't do whole lot. If you read H2A, Z, CLAR, 4, or RNAi components, there's really not much happening. But if you now do Transcriptome analysis of H2AZ argonaut or H2AZ CLAR4, what you see is there is a large synergistic increase in antisense transcripts across the genome. And, and many of those loci where you see our preparation are actually convergent genes. Now, to ask a question that are these transcripts really read through transcripts because they are associated with largely convergent genes, now they are sort of what we call initiating from cryptic to motor analysis. Martin actually did very nice uh, northern blot analysis with strand specific probes. In this case, we're using these two probes to detect in